If you haven't tried combining TypeScript, data analysis, and interactive notebooks, you are missing out on a seriously powerful workflow. Thanks to Dino's recent updates, you can now use TypeScript and JavaScript in Jupyter Notebooks natively. That means you can mix visualizations, real-time interactivity, and code, all without being forced to jump between Python and JavaScript. So let's spend the next few minutes working with Dino, Polars, and Observable Plot to explore over 100,000 pieces of art from the National Gallery of Art's public dataset. The data we'll work with is open access and includes metadata for artworks by various famous painters and graphical artists. We'll use a few key CSV files. One for artworks, one for artists, and another for images. We'll also tap into a hidden API that flags which images are public domain. We are doing all of this from a Jupyter Notebook running the Dino kernel, so no Python and no extra setup is required. We'll simply use the magic of Dino. First, we'll fetch and parse the CSV files. You could stream them line by line using the standard CSV parser, but we're going straight to polars for better performance and cleaner code. We are using the Node.js library, which brings the power of Polar's DataFrame API to JavaScript. It handles joins, filters and groupings, all natively and fast. Next, we load each CSV into a data frame, clean, and rename columns, then join them together into one unified table with artwork title, date, artist name, nationality, and thumbnail. We'll also define an additional flag for whether the image is public domain or not. This information is available on the NGA website, but only through the search user interface. Extracting it manually would be impractical, so let's reverse engineer the API call to retrieve the IDs of artworks with public domain images. With our clean dataset in place, we can now start visualizing. We'll use Observable Plot, which is a powerful charting library from the folks at Observable. And since we're in a notebook environment that lacks a real DOM, we'll have to hook it up with a virtual document provided by the Jupyter Helper package. The first thing we'll plot is a breakdown of artwork types, ranging from paintings to sculptures or photographs, and how many are in the public domain. We'll convert the data frame to a plain array of records, then generate a bar chart showing how the public domain distribution varies by type. Unsurprisingly, paintings and sculptures tend to be more public domain, while photos and portfolios are mostly still copyrighted. We can get more granular in our plot very easily with observable plot, which is composable and expressive. With just a few tweaks, you can completely change how the data is represented. For example, starting from the plot above, we can modify marks and some encoding fields and produce an entirely different chart, allowing for quick exploration and iteration. We can also zoom in on the most prolific artists in the collection. With just a couple of chained polars expressions, we group by artist name and count the number of artworks split by public versus copyrighted. Then, we can easily visualize the top 10 artists with another plot bar chart. Some entries, like American 20th century, represent groups rather than individuals. Additionally, an artist's work is typically either entirely public domain or not at all. This is likely because public domain status is determined at the collection level, with institutions clearing entire groups of works at once, rather than evaluating individual pieces separately. But static plots only get us so far. Let's make things more interesting by adding in some interactivity. Using any widget, we can embed an interactive table, so we can easily filter, sort, and explore the data in place. We can also use the Quack Viewer to get quick summary distributions per column. But what's even more useful is a visual gallery. So we can create a custom gallery component in JSX that shows artwork thumbnails in a responsive grid. All this is done by rendering server-side with React using the render function from Jupyter Helper. This should give you a clear, intuitive way to explore subsets of the dataset visually. Want to see a random set of 20 paintings? Done. Want to sample artworks from a specific time range? Easy. Speaking of time ranges, let's dig into when this art was actually created. We can build a stacked histogram showing how many artworks were created each year, split by type and by public domain status. What stands out is that nearly all copyrighted works are post-1850. Meanwhile, public domain art is spread out across centuries. But there's a weird spike, a massive bump in public domain drawings from the 1930s and 1940s. So we can filter for just that slice. Here, we can find 18,000 drawings, all created between 1935 and 1942, and spread across 1,000 different artists. We can easily sample a bunch of them using the component to get a better understanding of the trend. What we're seeing is the Index of American Design, a federally funded project from the Great Depression that commissioned artists to recreate American decorative art for preservation. These kinds of discoveries, based on pattern recognition, visual inspection, and context building, would have taken forever with spreadsheets or raw APIs. But, with the Dino stack we explored in this video, it's just a matter of combining a few tools. 
If you found this interesting or want to see more deep dives into real-world datasets using TypeScript and modern tooling, let us know in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.